Hey guys, I'm Grayson from Vought RV and I'm going to show you through your J-Flight SLX. Alright, we're going to start at the front here with the electric jack. So you got an up and down switch. And you got a light switch right underneath. And then if it ever dies on you or anything, there's a manual crank in here and I'll show you where that, that uh, jack's at. The rubber cap goes back on like so. Then you have your 20 pound propane tanks right behind it. Two 20 pound propane tanks. They're both full. They've been tested for leaks. Back here you got your switch, which will be automatic, and your regulator below it. So when these tanks are open, uh, say this one's open and this one's closed, once this one's empty, it'll automatically switch over and then you'll come open this one up. Uh, it's pretty simple there. Uh, like I said, two 20 pound propane tanks and they're ready to rock and roll. Behind that is your 12 volt deep cycle wet cell marine grade battery. It's fully charged, brand new and ready to go. It's in a battery box to protect it from the elements and help prevent some corrosion. This cover just goes on the propane tanks like so. You want this flat facing towards the back so the wind doesn't catch it and rip it open, blow it off. All right, up here also you have your safety chains, hook onto your truck, your breakaway cable, and then your seven-way plug. All right, let's move on. On this side you got a storage compartment that goes all the way through and it hooks up here. It goes all the way through and then you have access underneath the bed. So, this is the jack for the for the, the tongue jack. So if it ever dies, this will be a manual crank. This other one will be for your stabilizers. What we do here is we use a drill with a three quarter inch uh, socket. Although it's a lot faster. So that's our cubby there. Right to the right of it is our, our VIN number, tire size, tire pressure, how much it weighs, how much we can carry in cargo over here, and then right underneath is our first stabilizer jack. So these stabilizer jacks are going to be lowered uh, with your crank. They're going to be all the way down, but they're not meant to hold any weight. They're not weight bearing. So once you get down to the ground or on a block or whatever you're going to use, just a little bit of tension and they're good to go. And those are on all four corners. So we'll move on. We've got a nice big uh, through frame slide here. Shouldn't give you any problems at all. The tires all the way around have been torqued to 120. That's Jayco's specs, 120 foot pounds. And they've been filled to 80 PSI. On this side of our slide, we have our tank flush. So you'll simply just take this cap off, hook up a water hose, thread it on. And once you turn on the water hose, it'll flush out your black tank. It has jets in there to help break up all the toilet paper and matter that could be on the sides of the black tank. I'll clean it out. Right below it you have your outdoor shower. So with your keys, it's going to be your two black keys. It'll open up. You have hot and cold. Uh, it works fine. You can use it to clean off the dogs, the kids, wash your feet off, or um, wash out any large pans. You can't fit in the sink. folds up just kind of like so and then it locks back up so again that's your black keys right underneath that is your city water connection so just open up again the water hose will go in and you'll just thread it on just like that once you hook up to your city connection from your campsite um, you'll have direct access to water once your water's on you'll turn on your faucet or your sinks or your showers whatever you got and you'll have immediate water. Um, we would recommend getting a water pressure regulator on that guy, just so if you go from campsite to campsite, the different uh, pressure in their lines could blow yours, and that's uh, not a good thing to happen. So it's about 20 bucks to get one. Definitely recommend it. Underneath that is our first low point drain. So they're right here. So we got a hot line for our, our uh, water line, so hot water, and then a blue for cold water. So that'll just be used to get the water out of our drains, out of our lines, sorry. 
and they just turn. Immediately next to that is our, our valves for our gray tank and our black tank. And this will be your sewage hose hookup. So this cap will be on it. We'll take off our cap. We'll hook up our hose. We recommend pulling the black tank first to get all that, that thick matter out and then go ahead behind it with the gray water since it's pretty clean and flush it out so it doesn't clog. It's pretty simple there. Um, like I said, just hook up your hose and you're ready to go. Onto the corner is our, our back driver side stabilizer jack. And again, they're not meant to hold weight, they're just meant to stabilize. Right here is our coax cable input. So if you got a dish, a portable dish or whatever, or from a campsite, they have a, a satellite dish out there for you. You can just hook up to your trailer and then you have your receiver inside and you can watch cable. Moving on to the back is our bumper that has a storage in it for our sewage hose. So these bumper caps come off, just squeeze and pull. Some hoses fit, some don't, so you just kind of got to uh, check the hose before you buy. And then we have our spare, uh, spare tire on the back, full size spare, not a little bitty donut spare. And again, this one is uh, it's ready for uh, ready to go. It's 80 psi. Moving on, we have our 50 amp power supply. So this guy will just, he threads on to lock on place. Um, but when we want to remove or install our power cord, we're going to want to turn counterclockwise. And then we're going to pull out if we're taking it out, or we're going to push it in when we're putting it in. I'm not going to take it out right now because it's plugged up and has AC and everything going. And it just threads on place. So if the kids are running around or you come around and you trip on it, you're not gonna pull it out of the wall and kill all your power. Next here we have our water heater. So it's a six gallon water heater. It runs off electricity and propane. We have our plug right here. So when we wanna drain it for winterization or when we uh, or put it in storage for a little bit, for a month or so, we're gonna to wanna to drain that so the water doesn't get stinky. And then up here we have a pressure valve that we want to pull and check and make sure we have water pressure, which there's none in there right now, um, which is fine. But you want to check that before you turn on your water heater so you don't burn up the heating element. And you don't got to come back here and, and light it with a light or anything. Uh, all the switches are inside and it's, it has a, a, a spark right here, an igniter. And on this guy, I'd recommend getting a, a, a bug cover um, for dirt divers, keep hornets and dirt divers out of there. They like to get in there and they'll clog it up, tear up your electrical, it'll be a bad deal. We've got our roof ladder here for roof access. And I'd recommend getting on your roof at least twice a year. I'd personally recommend three times a year. Uh, checking all your sealant around your appliances, your skylights, your vents, anything like that. You want to check for dry cracks or pinholes. And then right there, it's wired for a backup camera. So that's one, optional. Two, one, two. Optional backup camera. It's pre-wired. Plugs in. It's super easy. Uh, and they're very handy. All right. Other side of our bumper, we have that same cap we can take off. We have our passenger rear stabilizer jack. And then we have our outdoor kitchen. So this latches and it locks from the center. Raise it open and there's a clip on the side to hold it. We'll pull out our drawer. It has our sink in it and our little grill. That'll fold down like so. You'll turn your knobs to light and then you'll have to use a grill lighter to light it. And that'll hook up with a, a quick disconnect line that comes with the trailer to get propane to it, which will be underneath it. 
It'll be right here where my fingers are. Your hose will simply uh, push up into it and then your line will come down to here and this will be your propane line that runs here. You'll push it in, turn your valve towards you to turn it to open it up and you have propane and that'll be pulling from your two 20 pound propane tanks. So you don't have to have an extra propane tank for this grill. All right. Also, we have our little mini fridge over here on the side. And then our sink, which is a normal sink. Hot and cold water. And we have a little bit of storage up here. So I'm just gonna push this in and close this up. And then push and turn to lock it up. All right. Here's our furnace exhaust, and this is another one of those things I'd recommend getting a, a bug screen for. There'll be a little screen that goes over it, it'll keep the bugs out. Uh, be careful with the kids on this one, it'll get very hot. Uh, when you're camping in the fall or the winter months and it's cold outside, you can place your camp chairs here and you'll have some heat coming out from the trailer to warm you up outside. Above here is our vent for our uh, hood range inside for our stove. And these tabs here to open it, you'll just push up and pull kind of out towards you. And it'll open up and let that air out. So this is gonna open when you're cooking and when you're using it, when you're not using it, or when you're traveling, you'll wanna go ahead and close it by just pushing up on the tabs and pushing in. Right beneath that is our fresh water tank fill. So that cap just comes off like so. You'll stick a garden hose in it and you'll fill up your water. That'll be to take uh, what we call dry camping. You'll fill it up, it's a 30 gallon tank, and then you'll use your water pump inside to access water to all your faucets and showers and whatnot. You can either watch this uh, fill by the monster inside. It has empty through full or you can watch it outside and it'll kind of overflow while you're packing the rest of your trailer and getting ready to go. And right below that is another low point drain. This will be right here. This will be for the fresh tank only. You just turn the valve and open it up and drain it out. All right. Here's an output for your cable for this side of the trailer. So outside you can mount a TV right here on this block hook it up right here with your 110 and then you can have cable so you can watch your favorite football games or whatnot outside. Good for tailgating. We have our more ride steps right here. So these will simply you just pull up and fold them in the trailer. They have adjustable legs on them so you can set whatever height you might need for your different campsites you're at. So just push in and they'll latch right here and lock in place so they're not going to fall out of your door frame. Your door here, the screen is separate, so you can open it up in a nice fall and winter months when it's not too cold and let a nice breeze in there while keeping the bugs out at the same time. And that sticks to your door, just like so. In your door, you have a deadbolt right here, so you can lock it up at night, be nice, secure, and safe. On the door we have a little latch here, or a catch for a latch, which will be on the wall here. So if it's windy outside and you want the door open, you can latch it and it's not going to blow anywhere. And then the door stops so it doesn't ding the trailer. All right. Our door handle here, it just simply pushes up and pushes over this way. You can push it over on top of the door, but I'd recommend pushing this way. Uh, when people have pushed it on top of the door, this rubber grip right here, uh, over time it'll leave a nasty black streak on your door and you won't be able to get it off. These just pull down. They're pretty light, not the lightest in the world, but not the heaviest either. Uh, and then we'll head on in. 
So we're going to start in our bedroom here. So both windows open. They both have screens in them and they both have blinds as well that just simply pull down and then you can push back up. So on this side, this window is fire emergency exit. So I'll show you how to open that. You pull this black tab down, pull a red tab up and out, and then push it out. You can leave it open for ventilation like so, or you can push it all the way out for your emergency exit. And then after that, you just remove your screen. All right, while we're right here, we have the same mount that's outside, inside, so we can move our TV from its, in our bedroom outside to watch football games or whatnot. And then we have the 110 here and the cable for it right there in the corner. So that's pretty nifty. It is wired for solar. So if you want solar panels, it's already wired. We'd hook them up, bolt them on, and you're ready to go. We have some closet space on this side of our bedroom. Hang some coats and long sleeve shirts and jackets and whatnot. Both have mirrors. We have a 110 outlet here. We have a 110 outlet on the other side of the bed as well. And then there's a light switch for our accent light that's going to be above our bed, the blue light. All these lights in here are going to be manually turned on and off. There's a button in the center that you'll just press and turn on or off. Fairly simple. Our bed here is on gas struts and it lifts up for easy access for our cargo space. And it just sets back down. And then on this side we have some shelving. Nice and deep, nice and big. You can fit some nice towels or blankets or clothes in there. And then again, they both have blinds, they both open, and they both have screens. We have a little privacy door right here. So at night, you can get some privacy from the kids. There'll be a travel latch up top there, and then you'll just slide it closed. And then we'll just latch that back. So last but not least in the bedroom is our AC. So this AC unit is for the bedroom only. It's going to be controlled in here as well. With our knob here, uh, there's plenty of, of modes on here. Right now it's off, and we have low fan, high fan, low cool, and high cool. So you can hear it getting a little bit louder. And then we have our temperature control over here. There's no heat strip in this AC, so it's not going to get hot if you turned it on to heat. Uh, it's good to about halfway to kind of warm it up a little bit, but it's not going to get hot. All your heat's going to come from your furnace. It'll even come in here through floor vents. So with this AC, we have these two louvers on each side that will allow air to flow really openly and wide through the trailer, through the top, or we can close it off a little bit if it's too cold and just have a little bit of air coming out. All right. So right here we have our monitor panel for our trailer. We can check our battery life, how much water we have in our fresh tank, our black tank, and our gray tank. Then we can also turn on our water pump here, uh, as well as our water heater. So you can just check your battery life here. Kind of press firmly on the battery little button. It's full, which it's also showing full right now because it's plugged into the, the 50 amp power supply. So it's going to charge while it's plugged in. And it also charges on your seven-way plug when it's plugged into your truck and the truck's running. So it'll charge your battery as well. We can check our fresh water, which there's water in it right now because we tested it for water leaks and we ran water through it. And then again, in our black tank, there's some water in our gray tank. Once our uh, fresh water tank is full, we could turn on our water pump from inside right here. And then we'd be able to turn on our faucet. And that's running from our fresh tank. Hot or cold. To use the hot water, you'd have to turn on the, uh, the water heater though. 
So we have the gas option in the middle or the electric option on the far right. The gas takes about 25-30 minutes to heat up and the electric takes about 35-40 minutes to heat up, so about 10 minutes longer. They both work great. Um, the wire gets fairly hot, about 127 degrees. Um, so be careful with the little ones, they can solve themselves pretty easy and it's not adjustable. All right. We have light switches right here to the right of that. So one is going to be for our main ceiling lights inside the trailer, so our left one here. So if you look above us, all the lights that turned off are going to be the main uh, ceiling lights from the switch. Anything left on is going to be manually turned off and on. And then to the right, that right switch is going to be our awning light. So it's going to be our LED strip on our awning. And then right below that we have our slide control. It's all labeled in and out. And our awning control right beside it. And then I can show you how those both work. So we'll do our awning first. Make sure we have plenty of room, nothing's in the way. And we'll press our button to hold out. And we'll watch it roll out. You'll know it's all the way out when a little white flap falls. That's when we've reached the kind of end of our fabric. And that's letting us know we're at the end. So there it is right there. And we'll step outside again right quick. So with our awning, we have the lights, the awning itself, and then on both sides we have speakers for our radio to hook up to. All right, and the cool thing about this awning too is we can adjust our pitch. So right here on the outside right here, you'd have a sticker that says pull down to adjust pitch. You simply just grab right here, pull down, and you can see our angle in our bar here. So now we have pitch up there, so we'll drain water off to this side. And when we're done with that pitch and we want to retract our awning, we simply just push back up and make it level, pretty level. And again, that'll keep rain off of you and a light rain and a heavy rain, I'd recommend pulling the awning in and high winds definitely pull the awning in. So that's our awning. Our slide, it's already out right now. I believe it's a three foot slide, so it's a nice big wide slide. And then I can run this in for us right quick, show you how it looks. And the nice thing about this slide, when it's all the way in on these trailers is that you still have access to walk back to the bathroom or to the bunk or the refrigerator or whatever you need to get to. So if you stop at a gas station somewhere and you're traveling, you need to get something in the refrigerator to, to take to the campsite or whatever. Uh, we could have our refrigerator on and, and get to it right here just by walking through. We have plenty of room. And like I said, refrigerator, you can get your box or your bathrooms if you don't want to use the nasty gas station bathrooms. Then we'll run this back out. So just hold. Hold our switch here. And you'll hear when it's all the way out, uh, the motor will kind of make a grinding sound, which is totally normal, totally fine. That's what we want. And that's how we know it's all the way out. So once we hear it, we'll let it uh, kind of make that sound for a couple seconds by still holding our button. I don't know if you could have heard that, but it made our sound, so that's how we know it's all the way out. So that's all right there. We have our blinds in our kitchen, which are different from any other blinds in the trailer. These are metal due to the heat, so they won't melt from the, uh, if they were fabric, they'd melt. And they pull up and down just like normal blinds at your house. And then we can open and close them. This light here is gonna be one of those kind of manual turn off and on lights above your sink. We have our sink here. And before I get too far ahead, we have some cabinet space down here, nice and deep. We have our fire extinguisher by the door in case of emergencies there. You want to check that once a year, twice a year. Uh, and by checking that, we'll just press our little green button down and if it comes back up, we know it's good. 
And then way over here to the right side, we have our LP detector, so a liquid propane. So if there's a leak in the gas or carbon monoxide or anything like that, this will go off. It is very loud and high pitched. It'll wake you up for sure. Um, and that'll, that'll take care of anything if there's a leak. So you'll know to get out of your trailer, turn off your propane, and uh, kind of wait for it to see what happens. So in our kitchen area, we have a couple of drawers here. Put some silverware here or whatnot. We have some more cabinet space underneath for some cleaning supplies or paper towels or whatever. And then we have this storage on top as well, some cabinet space. So in this packet here, this is be from Jayco. This will have all of your owner's manual, warranty information, any appliance information that's going to be in this trailer. So our microwave, refrigerator, stove, radio, everything's going to be in here. This is going to be our gas line right here for our outside little kitchen. So it's long enough. This side will go into the bottom of the trailer, and this side here will go into our grill. So that's up here. We have some chemicals for your toilet. So this will pull, pour straight down into your toilet, to your black tank. It will help with the smell uh, and break down some of the, the matter in that toilet. And then we have our mount for our TVs that can go inside or outside. So you just mount a TV to this bracket, and then this bracket would mount onto that block that's outside the trailer and inside your bedroom. Super easy. Moving on over here is our microwave. Just a normal microwave, a little bit smaller than your house, but it's more powerful than your house. These are 1300 watt microwaves, so they can heat up some food. We have our hood range here. So we have a light switch, and then our fan, which is running right now. And then we have our gas stove here. You wanna make sure to fold this cover up and then back. And it'll act as a splash guard for us from any hot grease. And um, you want to make sure your, your stove top is cool before you lower this down. To light this stove and oven, they're both controlled by these knobs. So these knobs are going to run igniter on the far left, our front, or no, sorry, rear uh, left side burner, our front center, and our right rear burner. And then our far right over here is going to be our oven control. And a little bitty switch over here is going to be our lights. So down is going to be our knobs and our oven light. Middle is going to be off. And then up is going to be knobs only. All right. So to light this stove, you turn your burners onto what would be a little flame emblem. So your gas lines are open, and then you would spark your igniter our gas is off right now but there's still some purging in the lines so at least it shows you it works there it goes and we'll just turn those off and again wait for these to cool before you fold down your glass top our oven's a little bit different on lighting Again, we turn our knob to the little flame emblem. And on this oven, we're going to press in our knob and hold and then ignite. And there'll be a little bitty pilot light in the back that'll light. It'll be a little blue flame. And once we see that, we can know we can turn up our knob to whatever temperature we desire. And this oven goes all the way to 500 degrees. So pretty hot for a little oven. All right. All right, so here's our 12 volt refrigerator. Runs off your battery. Uh, and then your battery will charge through your, your 50 amp power supply that'll go to your converter and charge the battery. So don't worry about your battery dying because of the fridge. We have our temperature control up top here. It goes from zero to five. So 
those maxed out right there. And how we know we're controlling the freezer is going to be this button here. It has a little white highlighted top portion of the box. So that's going to be your freezer. And then to the right of that is going to be a larger rectangle that's kind of white. It's going to be our refrigerator. So our freezer is on five right now, and our refrigerator as well is on five. And then to the far right is a low power mode. So if you're running the trailer, um, you're pulling down the road, you'll turn this on, and it'll kind of not draw as much power out of your battery in your trailer. And that's that. Nice, spacious, pretty large refrigerator for a trailer. Lots of room. And these handles lock so you, they don't fly open when you're pulling down the road. All right, so right above our fridge here is our AC unit that's going to be for your main kind of trailer here instead of the bedroom. And this lube over here allows you to shut it or open it to let airflow either come straight down to cool off the trailer really quickly during the day, and then at night when it's nice and a little bit cooler, you can go ahead and close it, and it'll push air through your vents that go across the top of your ceiling. There'll be one there, one at your bunk, one in your bathroom, one right above you at the kitchen, and then one in the bedroom. And then all your furnace vents are going to be down low. So anything on the ceiling is going to be AC, and then down low is going to be furnace. All right. So before we go further, we're going to go back right here below our oven. We're going to check out, this is where our fuses are going to be housed and our breakers as well. So if any fuses pop, our breakers break, they're going to be located right here. Like I said, we have an onboard converter. So we know that's powering on right now because there's a green con uh, blinking green light. So it's working. All right, moving on. So our media center is over here. We got some storage up here for board games or movies or blankets or whatever. Pretty good size. We have our radio up front or up, up top in the middle. So it's an AM, FM, Bluetooth, DVD, and CD radio. So it does it all. So it's on right now, and I'll go ahead and unmute it. Show you it works. We have a couple different uh, speaker zones here. So one is going to be inside, and then two is going to be our outside for our awning on those speakers that I showed you earlier. And again, it's AM and FM. You can hook your phone to it through Bluetooth here. Just hit the Bluetooth button, go on your phone, turn on your Bluetooth on your phone, and you'll see IRV, uh, for example, 68. Would be, it'd be a little number like that. Uh, you'd pair it, and you'd be ready to go. And then you can pop DVDs in here, or CDs, play your favorite CDs, or your DVDs when you want to watch something on the TV. And uh, the radio is paired to the TV through an HDMI cord that runs on the back. So when you're watching your favorite movie, you have the nice sound from the speakers, the nice ceiling speakers that are here in the trailer instead of the small TV speakers. So get a little bit better sound. And in the front of that, we have an HDMI port, a USB port and an auxiliary port. To turn it on, we'd simply press our power button. To mute it, we'd press the power button again. And to turn it off, we'd press and hold the power button. When it says standby, it's, it's turning off. We got a nice big TV right here. It's hooked up. Uh, this should be this little latch down here, this fabric pool. So our TV locks to the wall for travel mode, and then we can pull it out and swivel it and turn it. When we're in the dinette eating dinner or something, we can watch TV still, or watch our movie, or playing a puzzle over there and watch a movie at the same time, whatever you want to do. And it can swivel. Then we just push our TV back to the wall and you'll hear it click in place so it's locked for travel. It won't go anywhere. We got our TV remote here for our TV and then this little remote here is gonna be for our radio. And then below our TV we have more shelving space, 
plenty of room for whatever you want to take with you. And then more closet space here, hangs some coats and whatnot, some shoes or boots or hiking boots or whatever, and then some drawers for socks or shorts or t-shirts or anything. They'll go all the way down. Right here we have our bunk beds. These each hold 600 pounds. Uh, they are pretty comfortable. So if you want to get in here and read a book to your kid while they're going to sleep, uh, that's what they're, they're made for. They hold plenty of weight. They're really sturdy and fairly comfortable. They both have windows in them at the rear and blinds or shades, I guess. And then your bottom one's going to be the emergency exit and it'll open the exact same way as your one in your front bedroom. They both have their individual lights. And they both have charging stations inside of the bed. So up top's going to be a USB right there. And then down low is going to be uh, 110 mall outlet. And then as well, these both have kind of the privacy curtains. So when they're tired and ready to go to bed, one can go to bed and one's still up playing games or whatever. And that is just Velcro back there and stay kind of locked up. So here we have our bathroom. Nice tile uh, shower. Plenty of space we can fit. And a nice skylight here for those extra tall, if you're nice and extra tall man or woman. Um, our hot and cold shower here. And then with these showers and trailers, there's a switch on the shower head that will open or close the shower head. So when you want to take a shower, you'll open it by turning it down, rinse off, lather up and soap, turn it off so you're not running through all your water or filling your tank really fast, and then turn it back on once you're done and rinse off. And then when you're traveling, you can close it as well. Shower curtain comes around. For some privacy, we have a toilet here. And this is going to be a kind of a step pedal toilet. So we want to fill it with water like I'm doing now before we use it. Go ahead and take care of our business, and then we'll step all the way down on the pedal to flush. And that'll go straight down to your black tank. So over time, once your black tank starts filling up, this is going to start to stink a little bit. So that's what that chemicals for, tablets, they're good for smell and to help break down the any matter that's in the black tank. All right. Normal sink here, hot and cold, got a plug in it, and then some space below. This is going to be your only GFCI protected outlet in the whole trailer. So if you're plugging in an outlet that has too much power and it pops, it's going to be reset right here. And then we have our light switch right here for our lights. And then our ceiling vent that will open up with this crank handle and then we can turn it on. Let some hot air out. And then just close it back up. Give it a good little crank to make sure it's closed. All right. So on this far wall, we have our thermostat here. So this is going to control your AC and your furnace, even though they're separate. So we have our mode kind of button over here on the side, and then we have our adjustments on the right side. So right now, you can see it's on 75, it's on low, and it's on cool. We can turn it to furnace, and this is all touch sensor, and then we turn it off, and we'll go one more time, and we can set our fan speed, so we have low, high, and auto. And we'll just set it back. 
pretty simple. We have a 110 outlet down there, so plenty of outlets in here for charging phones or tablets, anything like that. And then we have our, our couch here in front of our TV with some storage above. So lots of storage and lots of outlets in this trailer and lots of room to sleep. So this is a couch and it also makes a bed. So we'd move our cushions to the side. You'd pick up on it, push the back down and then it'd scissor and make a small bed. And again, pull up on the bottom, pull towards you from the back and push down from this side here. The scissors down, really simple. And these lights, again, these are the manual ones. We have a 110 outlet on that side in between our dinette and our couch. And then our window here, again, they all open, they all have blinds and they all have screens. Moving on to our dinette, this light again is a manual. Nice size uh, U-shaped dinette, you can fit six people here. Same kind of windows. And then we have storage on both sides of our dinette. We go all the way back, fairly deep. For some extra storage space. We have our table, and then this table comes down and makes a bed. To do that, you just pick it up from your feet. Kind of set it down there to make you kind of available to get some cushions out of the way and the legs off. And then this table would sit if you can see these wooden blocks, they go all the way around the side and the back. This table would sit in here, like so. There are cushions would go back into place pretty much to what they were. And then you use your sides of your, the backs of your dinette to finish the cushion for the bed. Just like that. Pretty easy. And then this is the travel mode for this table so it doesn't fall over or fall off the legs or anything like that. And we can just store our legs in our cubbies. And these legs, they just simply go down into their little holes and they go just straight up into the table. Super easy. And then towards the front of our trailer, we have more storage space. Lots of storage. And on the left side, kind of got some bookshelves going on. Now I guess the last thing in this trailer is going to be our, this hooks for jackets or anything like that. If it's raining outside, you want to hang them up instead of putting them back in the closet. That's right there for you. And then our smoke detector is our last guy. He's going to be right here. All right, that's your trailer. Enjoy. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions, be sure to drop a comment below. Or if you have any suggestions on content you'd like to see, we'd love to hear about that. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Vod RV.